Hey, it's Phil's Good Man, and this video is all about the new settings that have recently been added to Crunker. About a month ago, I posted a video called Crunker Settings Explained, where I broke down each setting. But since then, there's a lot of really useful settings and features that have been added that I'm going to be talking about in this video. I won't be going over the basic settings, so be sure to check out the Crunker Settings Explained video if you want a breakdown of all the settings. But I will be talking about some of these new quality of life improvements that will help take your game to the next level. Now, I know that a lot of people are waiting for competitive mode to come out, and I am also anxiously awaiting its release. But I think that these features really make the game um, in its best state that it's ever been in. So it's a really good way to set the stage before the release of the competitive ranked mode. So let's jump right into it. The first setting that I want to talk about is something called the low spec option. And I did try this out on my laptop with integrated graphics, and I did notice a improvement in the frame rate and also the responsiveness of how the game felt. Um, so let's turn it on. But as you can see from this gameplay, the problem is that the feature is currently bugged. And you do not see the enemy's legs. So I think this could be a great way in the future to easily optimize the settings for a low end PC. But at the moment, I would recommend turning this feature off. The next setting that I want to talk about is called UI Scale. And if you've been watching my videos lately, I've definitely been playing around with it. So this changes the scale of the UI. And it determines um, how much of the screen the user interface takes up. So when I was recording the montage video with 47s, I actually dropped it down to 0.1. And that way I can easily crop out the user interface. And it allowed for me to create kind of like a cinematic effect. The other thing is that the UI scale also affects the um, custom scope. So keep that in mind. It affects the scale of your scope and it might mess around a little bit too much with those custom scopes. Um, personally, I recommend a UI scale of 0.8, but this is definitely um, up to your preference. So the next feature is show movement speed that was just added to the game. And um, Usually you want to have this feature off, but it is a really good way to help learn movement. Right now, the game's movement speed and slide distance and jump height are still tied to the game's FPS, but that will get fixed in the future. Regardless, it doesn't really matter because you can use this feature to um, kind of get a sense of how fast your movement speed is and then refine the movement speed. So it's just nice visual feedback and you can learn from it. And I'll probably do like some other videos in the future, like testing this out since I find it really interesting. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a way to like show average movement speed or anything like that. I think that would be cool as well. But uh, you know, for the time being, I still think it's pretty useful and it will help you understand um, the effect that movement has on your speed and that way you can use it to improve. But typically, you're going to want to play with this off. The next setting is called lag compensation, and the purpose of this setting is to adjust for lag, depending if you have a high ping or not. Um, so it goes from a value of 1 all the way to 1.5, and 1.5 means that you have higher ping. So to simulate the effect, I was playing on the Sydney server, and the idea here is that um, if you normally have to lead shots in order to land them, you can increase this uh, so the effect is less drastic. But it is an experimental setting. Um, so actually, if you look at the clip where I have lag compensation turned off, if you really slow it down, you can actually see that I did land those shots and they connected as they were supposed to. And most of these instances, um, when I fire uh, where I'm aiming, it will hit, although it takes longer to register. Um, so for me personally, I would leave lag compensation off. Um, it makes the game feel a lot laggier uh, in terms of input lag. It just didn't really feel very good to have it on. But you should experiment yourself. I know that um, one of the reasons why this was implemented is because some players had problems uh, that would require them to lead the shots significantly. For example, you can see in this tweet by Maswi, um, he has to lead 
the player by a really large amount um, in order to land that shot. And he, he's just so good and experienced that he's able to kind of uh, adjust for that. Uh, but for me, I wasn't able to notice an effect yet. Maybe this implementation didn't really have the intended positive effect, um, but it's still interesting to test out. And I'm sure that light compensation is something that um, will continue to be improved upon in the future. Although it may not be a manual setting, it may be taken care of automatically. The next setting I want to talk about is called weapon leaning, and it's very similar to weapon bobbing, but instead of um, a Y axis, it's an X axis. Uh, so it controls the amount of lean essentially uh, from left to right, how much sway the weapon has. So if I'm turning, the weapon will turn with it. And it does offer uh, a little bit more realism. It's not too distracting either. So this one's purely preference based. For me personally, I keep it on the same setting as my weapon bobbing setting. So that's 0.4. So you still get a little bit of the added realism and the added motion effect without it being distracting at all. So now we get to the fun part of the video. And this is the weapon offset section. And this determines um, the position of your weapon on the screen. So X controls left and right. So if I want like more of a kind of strike effect, I can move to the right. And then Y is up and down. So I can lower the gun. And then Z is uh, zooming in and out on the gun model itself. So you can see here, if I have Z at zero value, then the gun is well out of the way, but it does look kind of weird. So I'm gonna reset everything to default values. And this is really, really preference based, but the way that I do my weapon offset is I simply increase the uh, Y value a little bit. And that brings the weapon down a bit, a little bit out of my, my view and it increases my visibility and I don't really touch the X and the Z axis. And the next setting, you may have noticed that I've been using this already for, well, ever since it's been released. And that's hide weapon on ADS. And this is a really awesome setting that I'm really excited has been added to the game. The way it works is really simple. When you ADS, so when you hold right click, um, the weapon model disappears and then you get a nice unobstructed field of view. So no longer does the gun barrel block the enemy player model. Man, this is a feature that I've actually suggested to Sid in the past. Another potential solve would be um, allowing every weapon in the game um, in addition to the sniper. When you're ADS, um, your gun model can disappear. Because already you can get rid of scope borders and... You know. Okay, that's a good one, yeah. And a few other players have suggested it as well. So I'm glad that he's added it to the game. Um, because of this, I don't have to rely on the hide gun model setting. So I get to still show off my six skins, but I still have the competitive advantage of unobstructed view of the enemy. So before the hide weapon model on ADS was implemented, they had introduced the show primary, show secondary, and show melee options. And I would still argue that this is still valuable to consider. Um, so before hide weapon model on ADS, so let's turn that back off. I could be switching to uh, my secondary, like my alien blaster or pistol or deagle, and have that completely unobstructed field of view. So I could do like a uh, shotgun jump and then switch and then kind of snipe the enemy. Uh, I would argue that this is actually still um, something that you might want to do instead of doing the hide weapon on ADS. And I'll show you why. So I'm going to turn hide weapon on ADS back on. 
switch to the shotgun. So actually, like when I'm holding right click, it still takes like a few milliseconds for that to kick in. Um, and you don't immediately get that unobstructed field of view. I think this is fine. I think it might be even too strong if it was instant. And also it might feel a little bit unnatural. Uh, so I think the setting is okay as is. I know some people have been asking for, um, you know, having the ability to uh, to make it uh, hide instantly. Uh, but I still think even without being able to hide it instantly, it's uh, still really good. And it still gives you a reason to uh, potentially consider um, setting your weapon hiding individually. So another feature that I want to talk about is saturation. So I can turn it way up and the colors become more intense, more saturated. Of course, this is a little bit um, dramatic. I don't think anyone would realistically play a game like this with saturation set at three. And you can see what that looks like. And then if I desaturate everything, then we're playing Crunker in black and white. So that's kind of cool. So my recommendation is to keep saturation at one, the default level, just right in the middle. Um, Counter-Strike players, they used to turn up the saturation or the vibrance because sometimes the player model would appear too dark and increasing the saturation would improve visibility. But Quarker doesn't really have a problem with visibility because you always have the name tags and I prefer to have the game look as it's intended. Um, vignette adds a shadow to the sides of the screen. And um, this one is really preference-based. It doesn't give you a competitive advantage or anything like that, but it does kind of make the game look a bit more realistic, and it does kind of draw your focus toward the middle of the screen, which could give you a benefit. So for me, I actually like to have a little bit of vignette, because I do think it's a cool effect. Um, so I put it at uh, like 0.4 or 0.3. So I want to close by showing you guys how to get unlimited FPS in Chrome. So if you're not playing on the client, but playing with the Chrome web browser, um, you can go right click on the Chrome icon and then where it says target, you can add this, um, this piece of code at the end of it, dash disable, dash frame rate, dash limit. And that will allow Crunker to run at unlimited FPS. And I found out about this uh, from Vince, one of the makers of the game. So be sure to check out his channel because this is where I got the idea from. As of today, which is September 23rd, I do not see the unlimited FPS option available. And it seems that the client is defaulting to unlimited FPS. Um, maybe the devs want people to get on unlimited FPS ahead of competitive release. I'm not really sure. That might help even the playing field. Maybe they weren't able to fix the differences in movement being tied to FPS. I'm not really sure. It doesn't really matter because I was playing on unlimited FPS anyways. Um, but if you're wondering, it's no longer available on the client as of right now. It might be added back later. So these are my recommended setting tweaks for the new settings that have recently been added to the game. For a full overview of Crunker settings, make sure to check out my previous video called Crunker Settings Explained. Most of those settings are still the same. Um, disclaimer that settings are really, really, really preference based depending on what your goals are, whether it's performance, how good the game looks, frame rate, competitive advantage, showing off your skins. There's a lot of considerations. And when I make videos, I make sure that I turn the settings up quality so I've, lately I've been playing on 1.3 resolution because I want the game to look as good as possible for the videos that I create. But uh, test it out, let me know how it goes and um, drop in the comments what settings you are using and what worked for you, I'd love to hear. Also starting another contest right now and we're going to do a 20k KR giveaway. It's not going to be a secret giveaway so um, we're probably going to get a lot of people entering this one. Same entry method as before. So one entry um, via YouTube login, um, one entry mandatory for writing down the name of your YouTube channel. And that helps me find the winner and weed out any contest spammers. Extra entry um, for retweet. So not everyone's a Twitter user, but I wanna try to um, you know continue growing my Twitter following. And I post um, stuff about Crunker on my Twitter. 
So that's why we are doing an extra entry for Twitter retweet. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't already.